Aware of the importance of this particular topic, art and culture, the art is very important for your exam. Reason being, see, uh, you must be thinking only three to four questions will come from art and culture. That's true. That only three and four questions will be asked. Sometimes only three questions are coming. If you observe the trend, uh, still three questions is not a small thing. Say, just imagine you are getting one or two, one or four, or something like that. Uh, but cut off is somewhere at one or six, one or eight. In such case, uh, that three questions are also very uh, vital and important. So. Somebody asked, yeah, I have shared the PDFs, like the PDFs which I have already uh, shared. Is there audio disturbance? Oh, let me switch off the air condition. <clears throat> Hope it is fine now. Am I audible properly? Yeah, so uh, we will try to uh, begin this module. Uh, the module will be based like already I have shared two PDFs, right? Uh, yeah, I have shared two PDFs. One uh, today's class will be based on the first PDF, so just uh, open it. Try to you know uh, do this. Uh, keep juggling between the PDF because. I'll try to illustrate, I'll try to uh, make my class based on this PDF. You keep seeing that PDF and try to listen to me simultaneously so that it will be more helpful, right? Yeah. So the first slide which you are uh, seeing, that is, uh, these are uh, Calvarias. You can see them, right? Calvarias. And these Calvarias, uh, and the picture you are seeing is the dance form of the Calvarias. The dance form of Calvarias is called as Calvaria dance. And see, these people, they are known for uh, harmonious coexistence with the nature. These are uh, a tribal group of Rajasthan. You can call them, they're a nomadic tribe of Rajasthan. And these people are traditionally, they are snake charms. Snake charms means, uh, you must be aware, snake charms means they move from one village to another village. Generally, some of you might have seen in your villages also. In a bamboo basket, uh, they'll have a snake, and with that, they move from one snake to one village to another village. Uh, and this is how snake charmers do. And I don't know if you have observed or not, some of these snake charmers, they also carry with them some of the uh, traditional medicines. Uh, and this is how even these Kalbelias, they have both this knowledge of snake charming and they also have this knowledge of giving herbal remedies. See, because these people, as I've already mentioned, that they are nomadic tribes and they are moving from one village to another village. So automatically, as in this process of movement from one village to another village, they have rich knowledge about local flora and fauna. Local flora and fauna means, see what type of medicinal plants are available in which village. So they have rich knowledge of these kind of information. See, but what happened to these people? Uh, you must be aware of this Wildlife Amendment Act 1970. See, with the passage of this Wildlife Amendment Act 1972, you must be aware government has strictly uh, prohibited uh, like taming of any wild animals. 
And what this has led to? This has led to they have lost their livelihood because of this Wildlife Amendment Act. Government is not allowing them to take snakes or cobras, which they generally use, and move from one village to another village. So they lost their livelihood. And that is how most of them also have lost knowledge of the traditional medicines which they used to serve by moving from one village to another village. But why we are studying about this Calvaria and the Calvaria dance form is this Calvaria dance form, which you are seeing in this image, has been nominated for UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage under UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage. So that is the reason why it's important for our exam. So it's uh, called as UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage because UNESCO it tries to identify that any kind of dance form or any kind of art form it is declining then it will try to give it the status of intangible cultural heritage. Likewise, yes, this also has been given the status of intangible cultural heritage. And the dance form, you can observe, uh, so the typical dressing pattern of the Calvarias and also the typical dance form, both of them are popular. UPSC may frame a question on this and they belong to the state of Rajasthan, modern day Rajasthan. Please go to the next slide. Next slide uh, we are seeing is this Ghumar of Rajasthan. Ghumar of questions I will take at the end of the class. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing some of the questions being popped up. Because, uh, let's finish off the discussion at the end of the class. I'll try to uh, address the questions. See, Ghumar. Ghumar is another popular dance form. Ghumar is popular in Rajasthan. See, to begin with, this Ghumar dance form is popular among the Bill tribes of Rajasthan. B H I L. Bill tribes of Rajasthan and among them this Gumar dance is popular. But in the later day, this Gumar has become so popular that now it is quite different among all the communities of the Rajasthan. Generally, whenever a girl gets married, at her first entry to her uh, uh, bridegroom's house, then generally she will be performing this Gumar dance. You must have seen in this movie also, right? Uh, that uh, Deepika Padukone's movie, Padmavad, that Kumar song, that typical twirling movements, that dress also you can observe, it, it's uh, for doing that twirling movements. So yes, that is the importance of this Kumar dance. Uh, notice Kumar is not uh, an intangible cultural heritage. This Kumar dance form of Rajasthan is very popular. Uh, and yes, it's a traditional folk dance of Rajasthan. It used to be performed by the Bill tribe. But now it's popular among all the communities of the Rajasthan. Go to the next slide. Next slide is in this Chau dance. C H H A U. Chau dance. See the Chau dance form. The name Chau comes itself. The name Chau is because of that mask. The mask, the word we use for that mask which these people are wearing. Just see that uh, slide number three. Chau dance. They got this name from the Chau and it's a semi classical dance and one another important thing which you have to uh, remember in the context of this Chau dance, this Chau dance is a mix of martial dance form, tribal dance form and a folk dance form. What is this when I say mix of martial, tribal and uh, uh, rural dance means martial means martial dances means generally in uh, Indian culture Whenever people are going for uh, a war, they have this tradition of performing dance form. Say, for instance, this Perini Shiva Tandavam of Telangana. You must have heard about this Perini Shiva Tandavam. This Perini Shiva Tandavam of Telangana is also a good example of a martial dance form. Likewise, there is another popular dance form in Kerala called as Kalari Payat. So, this Kalari Payat 2 of Kerala is another popular dance form, which is also an example of a martial. M-A-R-T-I-A-L. Martial dance form means dance forms which are often associated with uh, warfare. Such dance forms are called as martial dance forms. So this Chao dance form is a synergy of martial dance means it's a combination of martial dance, folk dances which means the rural dance forms and the tribal dance forms. All these have the combined elements of all these three you will be finding in the Chao dance form. And there are three popular variants of this Chavu dance form. This Chavu dance form, try to remember, it is popular in the Eastern India. Eastern India, particularly the states of uh, this uh, West Bengal and Jharkhand, modern day Jharkhand and the Odisha. The variant of uh, this West Bengal is called as Mayurban Chavu. Then Serai Chavu is popular in Jharkhand. 
and uh, this purulia chavu is uh, sorry my mayurban chavu is popular in odisha purulia chavu is famous in Vietnam. but try to remember chavu the word chavu comes from the mass and the chavu dance form is a kind of it's a combination of martial dance form traditional folk dance form and the tribal dance form and yes it is popular in the eastern india try to remember about and yes, this also has been nominated under UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage. If you have seen this uh, movie of uh, Ranbir Kapoor, uh, that's uh, Barfi. The movie of Barfi also they display this Chao dance form in one, of, uh, one song. It's actually very bright and colorful mask they use in this Chao dance form. Then the next slide, <coughs> go to next slide. In the next slide, what you are seeing is this Muriat. Muriat too also has been nominated by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage. It is recognized by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage. Muriat too, uh, which state this Muriat too belongs to? Muriat too belongs to the state of Kerala. And yes, it is a traditional ritual theater. Ritual theater means, uh, try to these kind of terms, you must be familiar. Ritual theater means, see, those theaters are with art forms which are associated with the religious rituals we call them ritual theater actually the so-called muriatu it is a depiction of the fight between goddess kali and the demon darika i don't think you guys will go to this depth but you must be aware of this idea of ritual theaters ritual theater say ram leela which also is in unesco intangible cultural heritage ram leela also you can say it is a ritual theater because these are the theater forms which are associated with certain rituals so we use this term ritual theater so this is a traditional ritual theater and folk dance drama. Folk dance drama means, see, along with the theater, you also have this dance form associated with it, and you also have the drama associated. So that is why it is called as a traditional ritual theater and a folk dance drama. Try to remember the name. These kind of names are very important. Buddhi Ketu, which is a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage, and it belongs to the state of Kerala. Next slide, you are seeing this is also another UNESCO intangible cultural heritage from Kerala. It is Kudiyattam. Kudiyattam, uh, don't get confused between Kathak and Kudiyattam. Kathak is a classical dance, whereas Kudiyattam is a, yeah, not a classical dance, uh, it's a folk dance, but it's popular in Kerala. It's a traditional performing art form. Uh, and these are the kind of terms which you must be slightly familiar with. What are performing arts? Say performing arts and visual arts. These are the two terms which we often come across. Difference between performing arts and visual arts. Visual arts means say things like this painting. All these are examples of visual arts. Performing arts means dance, drama, music in which an individual performs. So they are called as performing art forms. So Kudiyattam of Kerala is a traditional performing art form of Kerala and yes uh, it's in Sanskritic theater uh, you must be aware most of the theaters theaters uh, theatrical performances in Kerala have strong linkages to Sanskritic traditions Sanskritic traditions or linkages to Sanskritic traditions means they are inspired from the Sanskrit literature I'll repeat this statement again why they are called as Sanskritic theaters because many of them they are inspired from the Sanskritic literatures so that is the reason they are called as Sanskrit theaters and yes, that is about this slide number five, Kudiyattam of Kerala, which is an ancient Sanskrit theater. And it also got inspiration from Kutu. Kutu we will study in the next slide what Kutu is. And uh, generally these kind of topics, there is also one more uh, type of uh, question they ask, that is, who is a notable exponent? If, they, if all any notable exponent do exist, then they have a tendency to ask who is the notable exponent. So notable exponent of this Kudiyattam of Kerala is Mani Madhava Chakya. Try to remember his name, Mani Madhava Chakya. So that is about this Kudiyattam of Kerala, which is an ancient Sanskritic theatre. And next comes this Kutu or Terkutu of Tamil Nadu. Kutu or Terkutu of Tamil Nadu, it's not a part of UNESCO intangible cultural heritage. Uh, try to remember, but it's a folk art form of Tamil Nadu. You can see this uh, images. See the next two slides. And this Kutu is very popular, particularly in uh, this uh, Tamil Nadu. But it is popular right from the stage of Sangam literature. Right from the stage of Sangam literature, this Kutu is popular. And see, the performer of this Kutu tradition, along with uh, he'll be dancing simultaneously, 
he'll be singing and he'll be reciting dialogues so try to understand he'll be reciting dialogue he'll be dancing and he'll be singing so it's a very complicated art form wherein the individual must have a lot of knowledge and individual also must be extempore and we should also uh, try to create certain things then and then. so it is often said it's a very complicated art form and other important aspect regarding kutu which all of us must remember is that this kutu also is used to spread social awareness among people kutu also is used to spread social awareness among people so it's not a ritual theater though ritual themes are also part of the kutu tradition but it's not a ritual theater alone they also use this kutu tradition to spread a social message say fighting against social evils or there is any tradition which is prevalent in the society which is against the norms of the society then it is also a gentle criticism on the rulers of the day likewise uh, from the ancient times from the sangam times itself this kutu tradition has been uh, this kutu tradition they are using as a critic against the existing uh, social order then next slide just go to the next slide i uh, one one small thing i'll add to the kutu tradition see songs are played with <laughs> dance plus music i already mentioned and uh, you must be aware of this nataraja swami temple in chidambaram yes this nataraja swami temple in chidambaram the temple deity temple deity means the main deity of the temple he is called as tillai kutan tillai kutan means uh, idea is to impress upon you that this kutu tradition is popular from uh, much longer time so the tillai nataraja temple of chidambaram the temple god is called as tillai kutan just to uh, signify how important this kutu tradition is in the state of tamil nadu then comes this <coughs> uh, another unesco intangible cultural heritage thateras of jandiala guru thateras of jandiala guru try to remember that name thateras t h e t e r a s and where they belong to they belong to uh, punjab a place called as jandiala guru of punjab see uh, why they are popular they are popular because of their traditional brass and copper craft of utensil making if you can see the images just try to zoom and see the image it's this tradition of copper utensil making and uh, brass utensil making it's quite unique and this tradition is fast dying so unesco felt that there is a need to preserve this culture that is the reason they have recognized this thateras the community of thateras who belong to jandiala guru and what is their core skill their core skill is manufacturing of the brass and copper utensils so that is how they are popular in the same thread i have also included uh, not just in the northern karnataka in hyderabad also you have this people uh, doing this bidri craft you go to this avits uh, there will be many shops which are selling this bidri craft and i'll show that image of the bidri craft there is one slide on that in the later part of the discussion so yes that is about this thateras of jandiala guru don't get confused bidri craft does not have unesco intangible cultural heritage but bidri craft has geographical indication tag given by government of india just be aware of that just to the next slide uh, culture classes i know they will be boring but still you have to think reason why i am trying to discuss because see once you listen these names na kudiyattu kudiyattam kutu uh, so whenever they come in the exam you don't feel that uh, that they are unfamiliar uh, it, it will be easy for you to revise so try to be a little bit more careful and try to follow the class seriously then comes this sankirtana tradition sankirtana also has been given this unesco intangible cultural heritage tag sankirtana tradition belongs to manipur it is a performing art form as i have already told the difference between a performing art and visual art performing art means here can the people themselves will perform so it can be a dance it can be a song or it can be a theater we call them as a performing arts visual theater means it can be a uh, pails are a good example of a visual art form so that is about this performing art form sankirtana tradition which is popular in manipur and if you observe carefully uh, this is very popular among the vaishnava traditions means vaishnava traditions particularly this vaishnavai traditions are popular in certain parts of the north east india wherever hindus exist and in the temples they perform this sankirtana and you just zoom out and see that uh, it's a kind of traditional dancing drumming and singing 
And that is what I have written in the next slide also. If you go to the next slide, I have written it as ritual singing, drumming, dancing. Ritual singing, drumming, dancing means as part of the rituals, they sing and they also resort to this drumming and they also do this dancing. So that is about this Sankirtana tradition of Manipu. And what is the theme, popular theme of the Sankirtana tradition? Popular theme of the Sankirtana tradition is generally this Sri Krishna theme. Sri Krishna theme, as I have told that this is popular among the Vaishnava community. So the popular theme among the Sankirtana tradition is the Sri Krishna theme. So that is about this Sankirtana tradition, ritual, singing, drumming and that. Then uh, go to the next slide. After Sankirtana tradition, next slide is this major classical dance form of Assam. So what is this major classical dance form of Assam which you are seeing here? Yeah, it is actually Satariya dance tradition. Satariya dance tradition of Assam also is very popular. And Satariya dance tradition uh, it has been, it is said that the Satariya dance tradition has been uh, popularized and introduced also by Srimanta Shankara Mahadeva. Try to remember this name, it's very important. Srimanta Shankara Mahadeva is a 15th century saint scholar. He is popular in the eastern part of the India, this Srimanta Shankara Deva. He is known for popularizing Vaishnavite tradition in the eastern part of India. And that is his, this is Satariya dance. And recently, uh, Satariya dance also has been given the status of a classical dance. Try to understand. Recently, Satriya dance has been given the status of a classical dance. Generally, uh, who gives this classical dance status? You must be aware. Yeah, classical dance status is given by Sangeet Nata Academy. It's Sangeet Nata Academy which gives the classical dance status to any dance form. And just try to zoom out and see this image uh, this, that sari which this woman is wearing is made out of Muga silk. Muga silk, just like Tassar silk and Eri silk. Muga silk is a famous silk, particularly in the Assam region, uh, because Assam is known to grow this uh, Muga variety of silk. And the saris which are over out of Muga silk, they used to previously only uh, people belonging to royal families were wearing, but now they are being sold to everyone. You must be able to, even Priyanka Chopra is also trying to promote this uh, Muga silk saris and Muga silk weaving tradition. So that is about this Satariya dance tradition. Then go, go to the slide number 10. Uh, in the slide number 10, which also is a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage, what you are seeing, we are seeing is tradition of Buddhist chanting of Ladakh. Tradition of Buddhist chanting of Ladakh. See, in the region of Ladakh, this Buddhist chanting is very popular. And see, this Buddhist chanting means the typical way of chanting of Buddhist is actually uh, considered as an intangible cultural heritage wherein it passes from one generation to another generation. Yeah, Ankhya Nats, did I miss out? Yeah, what are Ankhya Nats? See, Ankhya Nats means these are one act plays. One act plays. Uh, what is a one act play? So, we try to understand. One act play means, see, uh, it's like in 10 minutes, the entire story will be completed. Uh, say it will be a small narration. Let's imagine a small part of it from Ramayana. There is a small narration. Let's imagine an uh, a episode related to Sundarakanda, something like that. In 10 minutes, the entire drama will be narrated and it will be completed. Such one act play we call it as Ankhyanas. Ankhyanas means in 10 minutes, the entire story will be completed. Say it can be equated to this modern day, uh, what you call it. Stand-up shows or something like that. Within, within ten minutes, they will finish off the entire story. Such one-act plays are called as ankhyanas. See why they are called as one-act plays? See, you must be aware this Ram Lila tradition, right? This Ram Lila tradition, they have performed almost uh, almost for seven days, ten days till the completion of the Navaratas. So it's a continuous story till the completion of the entire Ramayana. They are performing this Ram Lila tradition. Unlike that, this ankhyana will be a one-act play. So that is about this Satriya dance tradition. Now let's do something uh, after the, this tradition of Buddhist chanting of Ladakh. As I've told it, and it's an oral tradition. Oral tradition means it will be passed from one sounds and the clarity of the sounds, the way they pronounce, all these are very unique. That is the reason why this Buddhist chanting of Ladakh has become popular. And that is the reason why UNESCO has given it 
the status of an intangible cultural heritage right so on this note uh, let's do a brief and quick revision of all these 10 slides which i have already discussed see yeah so kalbarias who are kalbarias these are uh, the nomadic tribes of rajasthan and this kalbaria who are nomadic tribes of rajasthan why they are given unesco intangible cultural heritage because their dance traditions are uh, unique and they are fast losing this dance tradition and i've put the passage of the uh, wildlife amendment act 1972 they lost their livelihood then the second slide i have discussed goomer dance form where is goomer dance form popular goomer dance form is popular in rajasthan it used to be popular among bill tribe but now the goomer dance form is performed throughout the state of rajasthan chavu dance where is chavla chavu and huruya chavu uh, and it's a semi classical dance form i already told that chavu dance form is a combination of traditional folk dances and the martial dances and the uh, tribal dance forms then other unesco intangible cultural heritage mudiyattu which belongs to kerala it is a traditional cultural theater and kudiyattam kudiyattam belongs to kerala it is a traditional performing art form and as i have told that uh, it also got its inspiration from kutu what uh, kutu is popular in part of the country kutu is popular in tamil nadu it's a kind of folk art form in tamil nadu i also told that this kutu art form is used as a means of spreading the social message and also means of criticism against the existing political order that is about this kutu or their kutu of tamil nadu and seventh slide which i have discussed that is thateras this thateras community where do they belong to they belong to jandiala guru of and what they are famous for they are popular for this tradition of utensil making that is brass utensil making and copper utensil making then sankirtan tradition which part of the country sankirtan tradition is popular it is popular in manipur and it is nothing but ritual drumming dancing and singing ritual drumming dancing and singing again by discussing about the concept of musical instruments i'll show this typical drum which is used by this people the drum which is used by this people it is called as pum cholo pum the typical drum pum uh, we will try to recollect this again then then comes this uh, sankya satriya dance tradition this satriya dance tradition who has introduced satriya dance tradition sri manta shankara mahadeva of assam has introduced this uh, satriya dance tradition and what is the name of the silk that is popular in parts of assam the name of the silk which is popular in parts of assam is this moga silk and who gives the classical dance status classical dance status is given by sangi natak academy reason why i am trying to revise is because see culture is a more dry topic and somewhat boring so there is a tendency that we might lose interest so keep revising it as many times as possible so it will be easy for you to remember going to the next slide see the next slide which you are seeing is the ramma what is this Ramma, R A M M A. Which part of the country this Ramma is popular in? Yeah, Ramma is Ramma is actually popular in Uttarakhand region, uh, especially this Gadwal Himalayas of the Uttarakhand region. Ramma is a popular. It is also a religious festival and ritual theatre of Gadwal Himalayas of Chamoli. See, uh, this Ramma, just like Chavu dance form, is popular for its masks. Ramma dance also is popular for its masks. You can see that. different varieties and colorful masks owned by people in this ramman tradition as this tradition also is dying very fast unesco has given it the status of tangible cultural heritage if you just do go to the first slide uh, it also is a republic day tableau once uh, given by uttarakhand state so this is about this another ritual theater which is popular in himalayas especially in the of the gadwal himalayas region of Rakat Ramana, A M N A. Try to remember. Then go to next slide. You can see a young boy uh, learning Vedic tradition. Yes, Vedic chanting is also a unique tradition, and the vocal clarity and the voice and the intonations and the way they are pronouncing. Hope I think. Uh, Now I am audible again. Is it fine? Uh, this one. Can you listen? Am I audible now? Okay. Yeah. So yes, this uh, tradition of Vedic chanting also has been considered as UNESCO intangible cultural heritage because yeah, this is a dying tradition as 
number of people who are learning this Vedic chanting and their numbers are declining. And as generally it is considered oral tradition, oral also has identified it as an intangible. So 